Spotted lanternflies are an invasive species originally from Asia. They likely came through international trade. Quieres? It's thought that the insect hitched a ride on goods such as like stone, wood, or other products that were shipped from infested areas in Asia. They were first discovered in the United States Pennsylvania on 2014. Since then, they have spread to at least 14 different states in less than 10 years, in which they have become successful invaders. These guys wreak havoc on crops and trees and do that by slurping up the plant sap, which weakens and kills the plant. They've got a taste for a wide range of plants, like grapes, apples, and even hardwood trees. Our researchers work hard by understanding them, giving PSAs about them, and just giving regulations to help deal with these pests. Unfortunately, even with that, they are still a huge problem. A great question is, what are these flies exactly? Spotted lanternflies, better known as Lacorma delicatula, are in the order Hemiptera and have piercing sucking mouth parts. Spotted lanternflies go through three instar nymph stages where they are small and black white spotted. During the fourth instar nymph stage, they take on a red discoloration with white spots. The adults are black spotted with pinkish wings folded over their backs. Female adult spotted lanternflies have a set of red valifers at the distal end of the abdomen. One of the reasons they spread so quickly is because they have a diverse genetic makeup by having multiple parents. This helps them succeed in invading new areas and moving fast. Spotted lanternflies use a combination of visual and odor cues to seek out their mates. The female releases chemical signals called pheromones into the air to attract the males. These pheromones are like a perfume specifically to signal their availability for mating. Male lanternflies are equipped with specialized sensory organs that allow them to detect these pheromones from a distance. Once a male detects the pheromone, he will fly towards the female. The male will then engage in courtship behavior, which involves displaying certain behaviors or movements to communicate his interest and intent to mate. This combination of chemical signaling and visual cues helps spotted lanternflies find and select their mates in their natural environment. During mating, males use a specific genital structure to deliver the sperm. Once the process is completed, the males are no longer able to mate again. Interestingly, a female spotted lanternfly can produce a large egg mass, which may be attributed to multiple mating partners. This is because in some cases, a female may mate with more than one male leading to higher potential for egg production. This strategy of multiple mating, known as polyandry, can contribute to genetic diversity within the offspring and potentially enhance the adaptability of the species. Spotted lanternflies typically lay their eggs on various outdoor surfaces between September and November, usually before the first severe freeze. This ensures that the next generation spends the winter in the form of eggs. A female will usually lay one to two egg masses, each containing around 30 to 60 eggs arranged in orderly rows. The female then secretes a thick whitish fluid over the eggs. Over time, this secretion will transition from pinkish gray when wet to a darker shade as it dries. Eventually, the surface will crack, creating the appearance of dried mud making them very well camouflaged. Spotted lanternflies can lay eggs on a wide range of outdoor surfaces, including trees, rusted metal, and any human architecture. Transportation by human activity is the most common form of movement and the main reason spotted lanternflies have not been contained yet. It has been shown that all nymphal stages and adult spotted lanternflies can utilize their hind legs to jump impressive distances. However, adults can only fly short distances. Polyandry and multiple egg masses are the main cause that these flies are spreading throughout the states. They do not have any native predators that can reduce the population. One thing we can do is to be able to recognize the egg masses and dispose of them. Although this might not have a huge effect on the population, it is still one step closer to stopping these pests.